Okay, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, right in the eye. See that little fold of tissue in the inner corner of both of your eyes? Well, get ready for this. It was actually once a third eyelid, or nictitating membrane. You can see it today in snakes or lizards, for example. The third eyelid was used for the same purpose as the other two, although it's unclear whether humans ever even had it fully grown. This membrane wasn't as thick as the two eyelids we have, and it could moisten the eye without obstructing the view. Right now, all we have left of it is this tiny fold in the corner of the eye, and most likely in the future, we will lose it altogether. And maybe we'll finally stop waking up with that yucky crust that forms in our eyes overnight. Now, while you're still in front of the mirror, look lower. Lower. And lower still. Yeah, those are your toes. Say hello and goodbye. Scientists believe that, in some more or less distant future, we'll get rid of our toes completely. Our ancestors, the ancient primates, needed toes to climb trees more efficiently. They used both their hands and feet to grab tree branches. You can see it today in most monkeys and apes. They have longer and more flexible toes, along with flappier feet that allow them to get a hang on branches. Their feet mobility also lets them grab objects from the ground if necessary. For us humans, even lifting a pen we dropped on the floor with our toes is a complex task, but not for our primate relatives. Humans have evolved along a different route. We started walking upright and climbed down from trees, making rigid feet and shorter toes more of a necessity over time. Today, we still use our toes for balance when rolling from the balls of our feet to the tips of the toes, but our balance is now much more centered. Now, what do you call a person who can write with either hand equally well? How can you reach with your tongue into your nose from inside? And why would you even want to do that? See further if you have a real superpower. About a third of all people can raise one eyebrow, left or right. It's a great way to send a playful signal to someone while telling a joke. But the ability to raise both eyebrows separately is much rarer. If you're not among them, that's because you cannot yet control and move the corresponding muscles. But this skill can be developed. Stand in front of a mirror, hold one eyebrow with your hand, and lift the other one up and down. And then do the same with the other eyebrow. This will help you learn moving them separately. Can you sit down on the floor and get back without the help of your hands or knees? This simple challenge is called the sitting rising test. Clever name. Although scientists argue whether this test is trustworthy in telling anything about your health, you can still use it to check whether your muscles and heart are strong enough. If you're unable to get off the floor without the support of your hands or knees, maybe it's time to return to the gym. Now stretch out your hand and place a ring on the crook of your elbow, then rotate your palm. If the ring didn't fall, you're a rare person. Some say only 2% of people can do that, but that's arguable. If you can lick your elbow easily or touch your thumb to your forearm, congratulations, you're among the minority of people. But some people bring flexibility to the next level. This condition is called hypermobility. It allows rare individuals to twist their bodies into weird positions, just like a snake, putting their head between their feet, doing a back bridge, and all sorts of splits. But in some cases, hypermobility can increase sensitivity because such people have a larger medulla. This brain area is responsible for processing emotions. Now, 90% of people are right-handed, and only 10% are left-handed. Yes, that adds up. But there's also a very small percentage of those who can use both hands equally well, including writing, drawing, and doing any tasks. Naturally, ambidextrous people account for only 1% of the entire population. You can't recall a memory all by itself. When you're trying to think of one detail, like the color of the t-shirt your friend was wearing the other week, you'll remember some other details too. For example, the place where you saw him, things you were talking about. The hippocampus is the part of your brain that stores memories. It usually packs them together, including multiple small details. On average, taste buds last 10 days. Clusters of sensory cells in your tongue. The buds that are closer to the surface are more short-lived. That's the reason you don't have to wait for too long to be able to taste again after burning your tongue. One theory says deja vu is some sort of a brain processing lag. Scientists think it might happen when your brain is transferring information from one side to the other. 
and there's a split second delay in that process. That means that your brain gets the same information twice and processes it as the event that happened before. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils, and one third can bend their thumb backward. Some people can produce a roaring noise in their heads. All they have to do is tense their ears or jaws. There's a small muscle in the ear. It dampens loud sounds, like when you're chewing. But some people can flex that muscle, and that creates an audible rumble. We, um, <clears throat> I mean human beings, have been evolving for 6 million years, but we're still not perfect. Turns out that our bodies have a bunch of design flaws. First of all, human eyes have tiny blind spots, never mind the philosophical ones. Such a spot is about the size of a pinhead. It's located at the point where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina at the back of the eye. Your optic nerves connect your eyes to the brain. They carry images for your brain to process. This is how you see. In the spot where these nerves leave your eye, though, there's a lack of something called photoreceptors. These receptors detect light and are the reason you can see. Without them, your eyes wouldn't be able to send any signals to your brain to describe what you're looking at. But because there are no photoreceptors there, you've got a tiny blind spot in each of your eyes. If people were designed perfectly without this flaw, they'd have eyes just like octopuses. It may sound weird, but the eyes of these creatures are eerily similar to humans. But their optic nerves run behind the retina. This means that the nerves don't have to leave the eye at any point. So there's no gap that causes the blind spot in human eyes. What else? Around 65 million Americans complained about having issues with their back. And this is because of evolution. Just like dogs, humans used to walk on all fours. When people were walking on their hands and knees, the curve of their spine was pretty much perfect, and all their organs felt comfortable. Because of this, there was never any pressure on their backs. Well, we evolved to start walking on two legs to save energy. The search for food took longer and longer. And when walking on two legs, people saved 25% of energy. But this was bad news for people's backs. Because this way, their spines were basically forced to turn into a column to support all the weight and make space for other organs. But if your spine was completely straight, you wouldn't be able to walk on two legs. So it evolved to become curved. But this puts a big amount of pressure on your lower back. So basically, to get rid of our pesky back problems, you should start walking on all fours again. Now, if you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. Very quickly, it puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. By the way, the longest sneezing fit was recorded in 1981. Sorry. It lasted for 976 days. During this time, a woman from the UK sneezed more than a million times. The part of your brain that's responsible for vision is in the back of your head. Interestingly, the right side of your brain controls the vision on the left side and vice versa. If you're in some loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, close your ears to better hear your friends. Push the tragus, the pointed skin-covered cartilage in front of the ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. If you feel anxious, press your fingers into a fist with your thumb sticking out and slowly blow on this finger. If you can't stop hiccups, put an ice cube on your tongue. Or you can close your ears with your palms and drink a glass of water through a straw in one breath. Pulling the tip of your tongue or raising your arms toward the ceiling can also be helpful. On average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels. That's as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise levels can reach 80 decibels. That's as loud as a working food blender. Leonardo da Vinci used to write down his thoughts in a journal from right to left. The actual purpose of his mirror writings is still unknown, but some people suggest that he just tried to prevent smudging the ink because he was left-handed. Creating a mirrored text is not an easy task for most people. Now, most people depend on weather forecasts and have to adjust their outfits depending on the season to avoid catching a cold. But not everyone! Lucky ones have learned to keep their bodies warm in any frost. 
These fearless heroes can walk in the cold wearing only swimming trunks and feel cozy. They can stand in the snow barefoot and even swim in a river or an ice hole. Usually, this talent doesn't come naturally. People temper their bodies for years until they get used to withstand extreme cold. Of course, they don't do it just to look cool or feel cool. Health benefits from this procedure include better blood circulation, increased concentration, and an overall sense of well-being. And how many seconds can you stand barefoot in the snow? Not many. Okay, stretch out your palms in front of you. Squeeze together all of your fingers except your thumb. Now spread the index and middle fingers and a ring finger with the little finger in different directions. Success? If so, you'd probably make a wonderful musician because the nerves in your palms are well-developed. Do you feel ticklish when you tickle yourself? Now, normally you wouldn't unless someone else tickles you. It happens because the cerebellum area of the brain, which monitors movements, predicts the sensations caused by your own movements. Then it sends a signal to other parts of the nervous system to cancel these sensations. But some rare individuals can actually feel ticklish on their own. If you're not among them, touching a new texture that the brain doesn't yet recognize or using a scalp massager can help to excite your nerves and bring relaxation. Open your mouth and say, ah. If you're a lucky individual to have no wisdom teeth, then you can be proud knowing that you're a product of evolution going strong. As you might know, teeth are the only part of the human body that doesn't repair itself. So if you lost all your teeth back in the dark times with no dentists around, the only choice you had was to eat liquid food. Not cool. Dentists believe that nature gave us wisdom teeth as a replacement for old, worn-out teeth we've had since childhood. That's why they grow so late in our lives. Today, though, with all the progress dentistry has gone through, we tend to keep all or most of our teeth intact until a very old age. And even if we lose some, we can always replace them with new ones. That makes wisdom teeth a vestigial thing. And they seem to understand that since more and more people never have to go through the ordeal of teething as grown-ups. Speaking of teeth, our entire jaw has been changing for the past, oh, 10,000 years, and is predicted to change even more quite soon. In fact, it's been the fastest changer of all our body parts. Back in the day, when early humans survived by hunting and gathering, They needed massive, powerful jaws and bigger teeth to chew through raw meat and grind plants. As they came to cooking and then farming, their food became less tough, and so their jaws became smaller to fit the current needs. As time went by, our jaws shrank more and more, and they're likely to continue doing so in the future. With lots of processed foods that don't need much chewing, humans of the future are probably going to have more delicate facial features with thin jaw lines and smooth cheekbones. Some body parts are not going away, but making a comeback instead. A hundred years ago, fabella, a tiny bone in the back of the knee, was only present in around 11% of people, and scientists thought it would disappear entirely pretty soon. But, against all odds, the brave little bone has made it into the knees of a whopping 39% of modern people. It's still unknown why exactly the fabella returned. But the most popular opinion is that we've grown taller and heavier than our ancestors. That much is true. As our diet became better and more nutritious, we learned to live longer and grow taller. We're now probably at the peak of our evolutionary height. And the fabella might have appeared in our bodies to provide a smooth surface for the tendon behind the knee to slide on, reducing friction and lowering the chances of damage because of wear and tear. Synesthesia is an unusual and rare ability. People who have it can taste music or hear colors. But only one in every 2,000 people has it. These days, our finger and toenails grow faster than they did half a century ago. It might be because people eat more proteins today. You start feeling thirsty once your water loss reaches 1% of your body weight. More than 5% and you may even faint. Water loss that exceeds 10% of the body weight, um, we'll just say that it doesn't end well. 
Your brain can generate more than 48 thoughts in under a minute. It's almost 3,000 thoughts per hour and more than 70,000 per day. Each person has around 150,000 hairs on their head. On average, every strand grows about a half an inch per month. If you combine the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles per year. If you get a leg cramp, pull your big toe toward yourself. This will stretch your muscles and reduce the spasm. People have bacteria that can produce electricity living in their intestines. These bacteria give off electrons, which creates tiny electrical currents. This might be the bacteria's way to generate energy. Maybe turn on some lights. Hey, it's dark in there. By the end of their life, the average person can recall up to 150 trillion pieces of information. If you brush your teeth before eating or drinking something, you might end up damaging your taste buds. That's because most kinds of toothpaste contain two chemicals, sodium lauryl ether sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate, that decrease your ability to taste sweet things and increase your ability to taste bitter food. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to have just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. They don't get tired and never sleep in. Boy, where do I get one of those? On average, these people wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. Only up to 5% of the world's population has this feature. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.